Hello, and welcome to the Frivolous and Frugal Knitting Podcast. We are three sisters, a niece, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we may have to cut that out. I think okay. you're the only one in the family that got singing lessons. <laughs> oh, no, someone else did. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, sorry. So we... <laughs> Oh, let's start over. No, it was beautiful. Um, Just keep going. Okay, so we love to share, don't we? We love to share. <laughs> we share our fondness <laughs> for knitting, the things that we create, and our love for the knitting community. And we do it all with a little twist of both the frivolous and the frugal. I am Frivolous Dawn, and in our family's birth order, I am the fourth of eight children. And I'm Fearless Miss Brianna, and I am the daughter of number seven in their family's birth order. Very, Very good. good. And I am Frugal Miss Penny, and I am the oldest in the birth order. And we also have a behind-the-scenes sister, Faithful Nikki, and she's number three in the birth order. We're so glad you're joining us today. And as you can see, we're spontaneously together. So we're not going to edit this thing at all. You're going to see what it's really like to live in our world. <laughs> so... So, for those of you who are returning guests, thank you so much for coming back. We sincerely appreciate your participation, your encouragement, and all the tidbits you share with us. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are watching for the first time, welcome. We hope you find a nugget or two to glean from our fiber ventures and journeys. And we hope to get to meet you on some of our discussions. So please join in on our Ravelry threads or our YouTube comments. All right, without further ado, grab your knitting, your favorite note-taking device, and a sense of humor because you're going to need it for episode 61 of the Frivolous and Frugal podcast. Take it away, Dawn. All right, let's start with what's around our necks. Do you want to start, Penny? Because that is an attractive, <laughs> um, whatever you call it. Okay. <laughs> Why, yes, I do. Some of you may have seen it before. And for those of you who haven't, don't gasp too loudly. It is the bottom of a sweater I'm frogging. And so it has become a cowl. I'm knitting a bottom up sweater for my son, and it was poorly sized. So I've decided to frog it. But at the suggestion of my brilliant sister, Dawn, I'm not going to frog the rest of it. I'm just going to knit from this and let it unravel as it goes. And I'm going to do that today. So you guys will see me do this when I cast it on. And it comes from what we lovingly call the Kevin Costner sweater. But the pattern is the Ish Inishmeen. And it's by Rachel C. Brown. And I'm knitting it in the Fiber Company's Erin Moore Tweed, which is beautiful, in the Glenbach Castle. And I think I'm knitting it on size nine and I'm frogging it on a size mm, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> what about the rest of you ladies who are very lovely adorned this morning? Well, today I'm the stand-in girl or Ruby <laughs> or whatever her name is. And so I'm sporting a shawl I did not make, <laughs> um, but I do like to wear it. So what kind of, what shawl is it? So this is um, the Boneyard Shawl by Stephen West. So I finished it this week and blocked it. This is Sueno Tweed. Um, and I literally followed the pattern using DK weight. So three skeins of Sueno. And I believe that was, um, gosh, I'm going to say it was knit on a six maybe. I Whatever the pattern called for is what I did. Um, blocked really nicely. Again, Sueno Tweed is new, relatively new in the last month or so to us. Comes in a few different colorways, but nice shawl for beginners. And when he updated his shawl, I did the yarn overs for increases. And you'll see it down the center spine as well. The original pattern had me doing make one rights and make one left. And um, there are a few little uh, glitches in it we found last night, but I think we fixed the ones that are fixable. And it smells luscious. It does. And what fiber wash did well, you I use? I used Eucalon. And why do I think maybe jasmine? It does, does smell on? like jasmine, mm -hmm. doesn't it, Miss Brianna? Yeah. That's really cute. Yeah. So nice shawl. Well, and, and I literally had like three grams of yarn left. So and what are you going to do with those three? I'm going to finish sure you. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, Dawn has a brilliant way of checking your knitting. Hold it up to the mirror. Yeah. And if you oh. stand in front of the mirror and hold it up, you can find it. Yeah, we found it. a few issues last night. Yeah, we did. But here I was thinking there was a flaw in the yarn. <laughs> there was a flaw in the knitter. <laughs> um, so, and I'm wearing Discovery. 
That is a call by Isabel um, Imbalt. Gabrielle. Gabrielle. Gabrielle Imbalt. Um, this is a call I first saw worn on one of our virtual knit nights. Miss Bonnie from Saskatchewan was doing it. So it's a long call. Um, knit with the US three and then you go to a four. So, and I even have it tucked in. So it really is quite long. Um, and I kind of like it when I turn it in so you still see knitting on the inside. Oh, um, yeah. And also just depending on the weather. It's very hot and humid here today, but we have the air blasting. So the blue is heritage sock in the marine colorway. Um, I'm knitting another project with that right now. And this lovely speckle is by Watts Up Yarn in their Merino Silk Fingering Base. And it has some very little um, speckles in it. it is, it's just quite lovely. I don't think Amy is dying anymore or maybe just taking a break, but um, yeah, I liked it. I literally followed it to pattern too. And um, the power for me of seeing it done on somebody else. And when I instantly like it, um, that's, I'm a visual person. So therefore I'm a sucker for hits at a knit shop <laughs> or like when we go to stitches or any of the other mm -hmm. big conferences, because if I see a display and I like the shape, I like the colors, I like the kit. Um, so I usually do pretty much um, color combinations that I like as opposed to creating new color combinations. I don't have quite that gift of mixing colors. Mm -hmm. So that is what is around our neck and what's off the needles um, you see right there that Brianna's wearing. Yeah. And uh, what are you working on there? So what's on your needles, Miss Penny? I'm monogamously completing <laughs> the <laughs> antler tooth by Tin Can Knits. And if the ladies cover all of their knitting today, I should have it finished. And by the way, just so that you can uh, wait with bated breath, I am playing yarn <laughs> chicken with a number of repeats and I'm still too short. So. I will let you know by the end of the podcast if I've won or lost. I think I'm, I'm going to be able to do it. I didn't weigh it or anything. It was just leftover yarn. I'd have to be on cardiac monitors <laughs> in an ICU to do that. That is crazy. Hey, well, listen, if you have a cardiac event, we'll Google how to save you, okay? <laughs> okay, thank you. So yeah. just, you can relax. We'll, we'll make sure you're taken care of. <laughs> that's when you hope the <laughs> hotel <laughs> Wi-Fi is good, right? <laughs> oh, by the way, that's right. We're together today at a hotel with an undisclosed location. And we're so glad you could join us. Um, it's just Plymouth. On cork, that's all I'm knitting, and I'm knitting now on a size eight. I'm, I'm following the pattern, and I'm knitting the extra large size. Mm -hmm. And on the frugalometer, a one dollar sign for both the pattern and the fiber. Very good. Okay. What do I see in your hands, Miss Brianna? Oh, the new college graduate. Yes. Which is why we are all back home for the celebration later today. Yes. yes. We are proud of you. <laughs> yes, we are. I'm so excited to be done. <laughs> I'm Ricky on Tenacity. Um, I, you can see my progress just kind of stilted. Um, <laughs> this is what I've done in um, May. <laughs> yep, May. Um, I just switched to my second ball of yarn. So mm. most of that is one skein. Yeah. And that's with that Regia Silk. Um, and I think it's in the rose colorway or something like that. Um, so that's our anti middle. Um, and that's on a size 1.5 needle. What did Dawn say? Aunt Dawn say today is like knitting a six foot sock. Oh, <laughs> yes. yeah, a hundred inch sock. <laughs> or a hundred inch sock. Point, I, sorry, you US one and a half using fingering weight. Um, for a hundred inches. And for those of you who haven't seen those stitch markers before, um, my favorite little Etsy shop for stitch markers is Karen's Hobby Room. We'll try to remember to put the link in. But I asked her to create um, stitch markers for the months of the year. And so at the end of every month, we send a text message around that it's time to, um, yeah, there you go. And they're so cute. They're on a safety pin when they come and they're in order. Yeah, they are. That's the fun part. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, brilliant. So um, Brian and I text about make sure you put your marker in. And then sometimes it's like, well, I'm putting it right next to the last month. <laughs> Two rows later. <laughs> uh, yeah. And our dear friend and viewer, Miss Renee, did it with us. She cast it on, on New Year's Day. She's done, by the way. She's um, yeah. 
and uh, Penny will cast on. And since she's monogamous, when she does cast on, Brienne and I are toast. We are <laughs> toast. Um, because she'll get it done faster than us, who's been working on it all year. So yeah. I somehow think we did the math. Four rows a day is what we're supposed to be doing. And that sounds so easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It adds up quick. Yeah. So yes. yeah. we need some magical knitting mm -hmm. to happen at night. Yeah. All right, frugalometer. Oh, frugalometer gift it. That's what it is on the frugalometer. <laughs> Here's a gift. So, Show it to one. Yeah. But it's probably my favorite project right now because I can just go to it and not really have to think about it because I've done the same for rows over and over and over again. So um, I really like it right now because it's rhythmic. And tenacity by Cold Comfort Knits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. She's been brilliant to help us do when we're stuck. So that is good. I am working on our hat of the month for this month. And for those of you doing the hat knit along, so some people call this the CC copycat hat, but it's copycat, copycat hat. Mm -hmm. And it is by Heather Maid. I am using a beautiful blue tweed. It's called Frozen. It is a Canadian yarn by Rose Hill Farms. And again, I think I saw somebody on one of our virtual knit nights knitting with this yarn. So um, love it. And I'm following the pattern as written. And you start with the US well, it's a 3.75 millimeter. I'd have to see what that US conversion is. And then for the brim, and then you move up to a four millimeter. And I think I'm liking the look of it. Yeah, it looks nice. Fiber and pattern. And I guess the power of virtual knitting these days. The other night I was, um, Jen from Newfoundland was showing me hers. And I thought it was a different pattern because the, this in-between row looked markedly different on hers. And I was just getting rare. I was just getting ready to do that. And here I was not reading the pattern right. So how nice for me to see her hat and instantly know mm -hmm. that um, either I was not doing something right or I was not doing something right. Those are the choices. <laughs> um, simple knit. I'm able to knit in public with it. And I think it's a I think it was a free pattern yes. on Ravelry. Um, indie dyed yarn. So I'm gonna call this three on the frugometer um, for the yarn. Now here, Brianna, is where we'd throw back to Penny if she wasn't monogamous. So, <laughs> so I'm that, going to do a handoff to Miss Brianna. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, so if we're back to you. We are. Well, I have two other projects on my needles. Uh, that's correction. I have one project on my needles <laughs> and one that used to be on my needles. <laughs> um, but my sweater oh, I've that. been working on, um, it's not any longer than it was. You can see I have one sleeve done. I did a folded over cuff and I don't like it. You don't? I what don't. don't you like about it, Dharma? I don't think it's thick enough. And I think Do you mean um, wide, wide enough? enough, deep enough. Yeah. And I don't like how thick it is. So on the other sleeve, I'm going to try um, just a, a knit one, pearl one, probably from this point onward because I want a longer cuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good idea. And I'll see if I like it. And if I don't, I'll just do something like this again. But um, I was going to say, you won't like this cowl if I give it to you. It has a full thick end, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what it is, but it just doesn't look nice to me. But we'll see. And I'm almost there. I think I have a couple more stripes left on the other sleeve, and then I'll be there. Um, but I'm loving the sweater. Just oh. easy, easy. And it's with the mono state. Your your way mm -hmm. um, for the white and the black, and then um, this is just from Stash. Stash. I did not realize it had this many colors. It is this is the first time I've seen Miss Brianna in how long? A year. Oh, well over a year. Yeah. Yes, this is beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. So it's slow going, but it's mm -hmm. and yes, how it much more on the body? Because you can wear a crop, can't you? Well, yeah, this is this was this too just crop. below my nipples, but um, <laughs> no, this will be quite a bit longer. I I stopped. <laughs> Go ahead. I stopped because I wanted to make sure I had enough yarn for the length of sleeve oh. that I wanted. So now I'll just go back into it till my yarn is gone. You're gonna play a yarn chicken, aren't you? I am. I am. You ladies, so. stop doing that. In the name of the pattern, 
Oh, it's Aros by, oh, who is it by? Maybe Petite Knit. Yeah, I think so you're right. I think it is, yeah. Yeah. Just a moment. I have my notebook. And Keep you, you uh, made the color sequence yourself. I did. Yeah. I wasn't going to do thick stripes. Um, hers has so many colors. I was like, oh, I'm only going to have a few colors. Maybe I'll do narrow stripes. Um, and I started it and didn't like it. So I ripped it out and um, I'm doing the thick stripes and I'm learning how to do her, her color change technique that she has um, on her website. Nice. And I like it. You, you can't tell that I'm changing color. Um, and so, yeah, that's something new that I'm learning with this sweater. Is that Very right? nice. It was, the name of it is Eris. I didn't yes. put down the designer. Oh, but I'll get back, right back to you, ladies. Keep oh. <laughs> yes. Well, otherwise, if we were wrong, it'll be the first time and we'll be devastated. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. So I would rather be wrong because that's a pattern people can count on. We <laughs> stay consistent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My next project is Vintage Prim. That's a paid for pattern by Andrew Maury. Um, I know how long, how many episodes has a hat been on my needles? It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, it has definitely tested me and my patience, and I'm getting much better at um, tinking brioche. Um, I was hoping to finish this on the way down last night, but I didn't get there. So definitely progress. And you can see it now, can't you? We the can pattern. see it. Now Absolutely. there's the back. So that's a totally different pattern. So I'm on the decreases, so I've switched to a longer cable to do magic loop. Um, it's still these stitches right along here, but that left leaning brioche mm -hmm. decrease that I'm hoping those tuck in a little bit. Otherwise, I guess it's consistent. Um, it is. Yeah. It's visually following, appealing, Dawn. Yeah, I'm following the pattern um, with the size of needles. I'm on a four now, but something tells me it was a four the whole way through. I don't remember this brim being a smaller size it may have been um well-written pattern it is a paid for pattern um gosh googleometer i'd have to call it a three for a pattern for a hat eventually i hope to teach this as a class for uh, my intent is for those who have got two color brioche in the round comfortable this is a great pattern to learn the increases and decreases and andrew maori does a nice job explaining the stitches and she gives credit to Nancy Marchand too. I think most people would say has kind of become the um, expert. And brioche plumps, I mean, it'll plump up a little bit, the yarns will, but I always think brioche stitches look a little wonky when you're knitting them because especially when you're doing a big increase or a big decrease, but then it kind of all mellows out with the block. Now, as far as the yarns, here's that marine again that's in this one. And I know it's probably not showing true to color. It's a beautiful navy. Yes. And then that is, again, Car uh, Cascade Heritage Sock in the marine colorway. And then the white is a sweet fiber yarn and they're fingering white. The color is birch. It's a very, very light gray. And this is a singles yarn. So mixing a twist with the single will be interesting to see how it blocks out. I don't think, and if you live in Northern Wisconsin, a fingering weight hat will be considered warm, but it will be stylish. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm hoping next week it's done and blocked and it'll be fun to see um, the difference. So there it is, the Vintage Prim by Andrew Mowry. Uh, yarn, Cascade Heritage to me is, is like in that one to two level on the flugelometer, but um, Sweet Fibers, a indie dyed yarn, so I'd probably call that three on the flugelometer. All right, anything else on your needles or was on your needles and no longer is? Yes. <laughs> um, we have a genetic talent for product, for the record. Well, this is a project I cast on during the Magpie um, knitting retreat. And I made some good progress, so I thought, but I was 20 stitches off. And um, so that wasn't going to work. <laughs> and so I, it's now returned to its original state. But I'm very, very excited to try these hour balls. I liked seeing the colors come out when I was started knitting before. Um, and this pattern was um, The Shift. That's by Angela Maury. Um, and um, I'm doing It's the Cowl. So 
I really like your project bag. Oh, for the cry. <laughs> Brianna, stop it. Your Auntie Dawn's affinity for half gallon Ziploc bags. Oh, I love half gallon Ziploc bags. Bottom. Yeah. I know. They don't make them anymore. So if anybody can find them, let me know. Um, we can go project bank shopping right after this if we need to. Where? <laughs> yeah, we're, that's right. Okay. Considering our uh, just yeah. AM yeah. Wi Fi. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We're counting our blessings. That's right. Yeah. Yep. I have to chuckle. Coming back to that the hometown where you were raised, I don't remember it being this small when I was, we were growing up, and now it's like, mm -hmm. yeah. So, a little story. Last night we decided to block wingspan, and so we brought all of our blocking stuff. We forgot color catchers and vinegar, so I just sent my husband out, and he's like, you know. The gas stations around here just don't carry vinegar <laughs> because that's the only thing that's open. And I forget that because we're so used to 24-hour stores. And um, Well, and thank you for taking the blame, but I am the one who forgot the, the vinegar and the color catchers. But I brought my wash and my yeah. nasty little towels to scoop it out. But we're, we're concerned, or I don't know if that's the right word, we're going to be prepared in case bleeding happens. So that's why we thought, and then, so Brianna brought us some color catchers this morning. So yeah. in the event that this afternoon we get that block, maybe I'll try to get a little bit of footage or some pictures, and I can throw it in mm -hmm. at the end. But you'll definitely be able to bring it or next week and, or show it on the podcast. Right. And just for those who are first-time viewers, the reason we have some concern and Dawn asked a brilliant question last night. I'm like, let's just throw it in the sink here at the hotel and I'll, we'll just let it go. And she goes, are you willing to remit that? That was a very good question. Oh. Because my hands turned blue and purple as I was knitting it. So we know it was over dyed yeah. and or not set, one of the two. And so, yeah, that made me pause and say, okay, let's just go ahead and knit together for knitting with the aunties, really knitting with the aunties. <laughs> And we'll try to block it tomorrow. So thank you, sis. But that was really my oversight. Yeah. And I'm hoping it's overdyed. I'm hoping it is too, or I'll be overdone. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of goes with our rank name now, doesn't That's it? Right. But we won't go there. <laughs> well, listen, do you have anything else on your needle? I have 14 more projects. <laughs> she brought every the stink of, in one of them. No, I, I just have our <laughs> other knit along that we're doing with the podcast. Is, um, the sweet little nothing by our dear, dear friend, Susan. She goes by Pink Shaw Girl on Ravelry, and we just refer to her as Pink. Um, this was one of her designs. She worked together with Irene Designs, and you know Irene from the Free Play Podcast. We're doing a three-month knit-along, and this is just a lovely little um, shawl. Brilliant um, design work as I see if I can try to explain here. So look at you guys, the cast on edge. We're putting picos in as we go. I've never done that before. How fun, fingering weight, one skein. Boy, go to the discussion board. Somebody um, just did one in a blue Zauer ball that is simply, simply stunning. I am about halfway, maybe just a little bit more than halfway. And um, I'm following the pattern literally for the number of stitches, the number, the size of needles. I think it's a four, but I don't see that. So we'll see if that's true. Penny's down here on her hands and knees, uh, crawling around the floor. I cannot bear to lose one little stitch. Oh, mark. for the cry eye. <laughs> okay. I've officially lost it. Go ahead. <laughs> well, a couple of lost it on several <laughs> levels. I think I'm going to love this when it's done. Now, the yarn I'm using by Knit Circus, it is in the trampoline vase. It is a gradient. And I am still on the white and pink. I've got to be changing colors to a little more fuchsia pretty soon. Um, it is a um, 100 gram skein. It's a merino. In fact, I think it's 100% superwash merino. Um, frugalometer, I'd call it a five. Um, I'm hoping to use the whole skein. I am going to put beads, I think, on mine. I don't think this will be done by next week, maybe a couple more weeks. But maybe let's talk to um, Pink and let's do a random draw next week. Okay. So, again, we're doing this through the um, 
end of July, early August, whatever. And if you need help, again, Pink has been an amazing moderator in that group. The, not only the encouragement, but people will ask her technical questions. She has a great knack for describing how things are done, but also telling you just to enjoy the knit. So don't get too hung up. It's a, a pretty adaptable pattern. And um, gosh, go look. I'm so impressed with uh, the different yarns people are picking. Some people are done already starting their second. So kudos for those of you who are doing that. But um, it's been a very lively discussion board. So that's been good. So that is all that I'm going to confess is on my needles, or at least that's all I brought with me. Um, yeah. So, super. What you been learning? You know what I am learning with this antler tooth hat is how to cable without using a cable needle. So I've never done that before. Um, you've heard me before. I really like cables. And so I am just pinching them and holding them because they're only four stitch cables. And I will tell you that um, I do believe it saves time. It's efficient, but um, it does look wonkier than when you use a, a cable needle. And I think that's probably because when I pinch, I'm pulling on the stitch and I think it kind of stretches it out a little bit, but I'm trusting the block. And so, yeah, it's, and I just saw a mistake. By golly, yes, ma'am. I don't see it. <laughs> I know. Why didn't you guys catch that last night? No, we must have held it up in there. See my mistake? No. Oh. Oh yeah. 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 So. No one will ever know. Rod. No, I don't know. Why not try dropping down? It's all the way on that one. It's all the way around. Oh, yeah, yes. it's consistent. I believe it. Yeah, it's a design bridge. That became a design feature. If it's the same all the way around, don't yeah. you think? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to Well, of course, it. actually, that's kind of what I'm learning. So I'm going to skip you for a minute. Okay. Is if you don't, we said this about if you don't like it now, you're not going to like it 20 rows from now. So I found myself when I was knitting that vintage print hat, if I saw a mistake in my brooch, uh, brioche, I would say, oh, I can live with that. And then you go around again and you see it. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure I can live with that. I go around again. I can't, I can't, I can't. So I just had to sink back. So Penny, you'll see her wheels churning right now. So she is trying to decide, I'm sure, whether there's something she can live with. So it's so easy for somebody else just to say it's a design element or who cares, it's too close. Oh, look at you. Yeah, you don't see it? Are you sure? I'm, I'm totally positive, Penny. Yep. And Brianna's that. not persuaded. Um, it's awfully early in the hat. Oh, yeah. But you can see the line changes. Yeah, you can. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> she will not be playing yard chicken today. Yeah, you know what? I think I'd have to be with you. Dr. Frog. So wow. you know, and just so you know, I think that hat is, you don't need to go that many repeats. I don't either. Well, there's a, there's the beauty of finding your mistakes and making adjustments. And being so brave not to cry on the podcast. Yes. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the podcast isn't over yet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, Miss Kimberly, um, or Miss Kim, you know who we are, you are from Illinois. You posted a question on YouTube about what do I do when I want to get a project finished but I can't and it's dragging and you find yourself avoiding it. <laughs> well, although I did respond to you and again this week you can't see any of my comments. I we don't know what's wrong. Um, I'm going to revise that anyway and resubmit my response <laughs> based on how I feel after this. So thank you. So expound a little bit. Kim wanted to know, she's trying to be a monogamous knitter as well, but the project she is knitting is she's a little feeling a little sloggy right now. So um, she said she just finds herself knitting less every day because she's not nearly as excited about the project. So that's where the monogamous knitter penny, your comment to how to stay motivated in the middle of a larger project if you are a monogamous knitter. 
Right. And basically, I just said, um, because this is an experiment for me, I think we, we all know that I am not typically by nature a monogamous knitter. Um, I am learning that I take a look, number one, who am I knitting it for? I want to finish it for that person. It's a gift. And Miss Kim, you probably knit more gift and um, charity knitting than anyone I know. So keeping that in the forefront of your mind, I can finish this. Um, because I want to give it to so-and-so and I want it to be completed and I want to do well. And so I just kind of power through it. And then I also think in the back of my mind, as soon as I finish this, I get to cast on something else or frog what I'm working on. So um, I think, yeah, that's what I do. There's no magic to it. Now, some I think would agree that, you know, there are no rules in knitting for heaven's sake. Right. If you don't like it and you want it to be enjoyable, set it aside and cast on something else. Um, mine is just an experiment. I want to see what I'm learning through being a monogamous knitter. And um, maybe you can approach it like that. What am I going to learn from this? What did I learn that I like or don't like? And um, I think one of my takeaways is going to be, I will definitely have some idea of if I like to knit four stitch cables without needles because I'm going to keep doing that. Yeah. So I will have practiced it a couple of times by yeah. the time I finish it. And you know, I think all of us love knitting. It's, it's, it, it means different things to different people, of course, but if you find yourself in an experiment and you are knitting less and less, that, that wasn't the goal of the experiment. Mm -hmm. So don't hesitate to, um, maybe that, ah, actually, Maybe that was the goal, to determine if it's a good suit fit yeah. for you. Yeah. Oh, that was brilliant, Don. Oh, so wow. if you're not really monogamous by nature in your knitting, then call the experiment. Um, you learn. Yeah, absolutely. Are you learning anything, Miss Brianna? I am learning a few things. <laughs> um, I'm learning that I love um, tenacity. I think I actually really, really like this project. And I think it's exactly what I need right now because I don't have a lot of time or brain space, um, like extra time or extra brain space <laughs> in my schedule or the things that are going on. And so um, tenacity is perfect because I know the pattern. I can pick it up. I can tell my mistakes pretty, pretty right away because um, the yarn overs are so consistent. Um, and I can take it with me anywhere. There's really no change coming up soon, you know? A <laughs> hundred inches from now. <laughs> I know. And I think that's the one thing that I felt when I cast it on my shift is there was a lot going on and I loved it. And I think I'm going to enjoy that project, um, but it's not something I could just take with me anywhere or pick up in any time of day or um, right. brain space. So that's where I think this project is perfectly timed for me because um, yeah, I can pick it up, set it down at any point, and I know exactly where I'm at. Um, but it's pretty enough. It's just not garter stitch. So great. Yeah, so it holds some interest. I don't know if you can hold it up a little closer so they can see all your stitch markers. So this is what I learned from Brianna when she was knitting this. She put all those little stitch markers along the top for each of the repeats. I didn't do that initially. And um, after seeing hers, um, when we were Zoom knitting one night, it was yeah. brilliant because you, Within six stitches, you'll know if you're off. Right. At least by stitch count. Yeah. And then in a couple of rows, you'll know if you forgot a yarn over. Yeah. So the other thing that we learned, and we learned it through again, Miss Renee, she, when she, hers finished, um, she knit hers to 72 inches, I think. So yeah. really, it's however long you want it for your height. And she is um, not very tall. So 72 or 74 inches done and when she blocked it it was over a hundred inches what a lesson for brianna and i because we were talking this morning how will we know so we had to buy five skeins of this yarn according to the the pattern so we think um for me at least yeah. at the end of four i'm gonna block it i'll just put it on either some waist yarn or long cable and then I'll see what the block is. Because I really want mine about 110. Yeah. You're much shorter. You may be yeah. happy mm -hmm. with, um, you know, less gains. So thank you, Renee, for sharing that with us. Because um, we might as well learn from those who um, go before us. So, yeah. 
And if you're interested in seeing Miss Renee's project, she is Granny Fly 81 on oh Ravelry. Oh my gosh, I'm glad you said that. So, all right. And the other thing I was learning is I, I live in my little fictitious knitting world. You know, you should come join me there. It's an amazing <laughs> place. Um, but I realized when we talk about um, projects we're working on, we are primarily knitters, but please, like, especially if you join us for our virtual um, knitting events, we don't care if you're crocheting or embroidery or macrame or decoupage or needle felting. We love all projects. So I apologize if um, we didn't make that clear. So we just want to know what's on or off your needles if you're willing to share that. So we don't, it doesn't matter to us what mm -hmm. um, method you're using to do that. Not at all. So what is new at Frivolous and Frugal? Well, listen, as always, we have oodles of things going on and I'm going to refer to my notes. First of all, a big hearty thank you and welcome um, to those of you who have just been so gracious with your comments and your encouragement. We're, we're so blessed. And I'm going to use that word intentionally because our community is probably the kindest, most yeah. cordial, warm community that I have had an opportunity mm -hmm. to be a part of. So thank you all so very much. And thank you, Ms. Pink, for moderating. As Dawn said, we're always grateful for that. Um, upcoming events. So let it be known that our CALs are up and running. So the first CAL that we want to talk about is, um, well, wait a minute, let me do that before I do that. Let's talk about the 2000 subscriber giveaway. No giveaways yet. We're not near 2000. Our next YouTube giveaway will be in episode 64. Um, and by the way, Maggie, uh, two sticks, you were chosen last week pretty, better, pretty, better, what? I can't even get it out of my mouth. Better get in touch with us pretty soon so we can send you your gift. Um, next week, we'll be drawing for our Finish Fix Frog or Flip Cow. So if you are in that thread on Ravelry, let us know. We'll draw that during Knitting with the Aunties. Um, the May Hat Cow, if you are knitting with us, as Dawn mentioned, it's Copycat, Copycat, Beanie by Emily Ingrid. Go ahead and post your hats in the Ravelry thread and we will draw from there. I'm guessing maybe next week or the week after, somewhere <laughs> around in there. Our May ornament cow is going to be the personalized bobble ornaments by Anna Wadler. Uh, again, if you are knitting the ornament a month, please drop your photos in that thread. We have closed the saltwater mittens cow. However, if you need any help, Miss Jen, has been so gracious as to offer that. So don't hesitate to get in touch with her. She is eager and willing to help you. The Sweet Little Nothing Cal, as Dawn mentioned, is going for three months, May, June, July. We will wrap it up August 1st, or is it June, July, August? I don't know. I think it's May, June, July. <laughs> well, whenever. But we're going to draw during episode 62 for a giveaway. So make sure you are active in that thread if you want to be considered. Also, if you are in the Chicago area and or want to fly in for the weekend, we are going to have our first frivolous and frugal mini meetup in Hoffman Estates on the weekend of July 30th and 31st, 2021. Again, it is not programmed at all. Literally, literally. We're not ordering lunch. We're not getting anything catered. They're not going to be swag bags. We are just going to hang out at a hotel and knit. So feel free to join us. There is a thread in Ravelry. As soon as we get the coupon code, yeah. Dawn's going to upload that. Go ahead. I was hoping we had that by today. Yeah. It just hasn't been emailed to us, but that will allow you to reserve a room at a discounted rate. We only have a block of 20 rooms. Once those are filled up, if there is availability, that coupon code will still work. And for those curious, we are following the COVID uh, restrictions and regulations of the hotel. All right, um, looking ahead into June, if you are interested in a virtual knitting event, we would love to see you for our June virtual knit night on the 12th from 7 to 9 p.m. Central Time. 
as always, we will, not as always, last month kind of messed that up, but we try to get the link up and open so that you can open it about an hour before the event starts. And if you are not active on Ravelry, please email me and I will add your name to my email list. And I email that link out about an hour before. And for those of you who are new to our virtual midnights, um, let me just tell you, it is two hours of nothing but talk about knitting and the fiber arts. We love our knitting. We um, want to see what's on our friends' needles. We want to see their projects. Oftentimes they tell us what they've learned and they share. Also inspiration, like John said, once you see it, just keep Ravelry open and put it in your shopping cart because we get oodles of ideas and see different fibers. Mm -hmm. So we really encourage you to do that. Our rule is always participate at your own level of comfort. If you just want to knit, watch and listen, that's fine. But we also give you opportunity to share. Usually there's a guiding question as well. So we use that to, um, again, get ideas, suggestions, and inspirations. And I failed to jot down the June um, daytime knit together, which will be the fourth mm -hmm. Saturday of June. And actually, um, you want me to look it'll, it? no, that's right. It'll be in our show notes. That's a month away. We're, we're getting ready right now as we're taping. The minute we stop doing this, I said taping. We don't tape anymore, do we? No. We record. That would have been VHS days <laughs> or eight millimeter videos. I'm sorry, films. Um, we're going to do the May Saturday morning yep. night together. So um, we're anxious to do that. But as always, you plenty know, going on. Miss Cindy um, left a message on YouTube. One of those Saturday ones is the local yarn shop there, Knit in Public Day. Oh, Ooh, yeah, so maybe so. we might have to revisit that. Do we yeah. want to not have an event? Oh, I don't know. Something? I just think it'll be fun. Yeah, it's, okay. We're knitting in public, kind of. Digital public. Yeah, there you go. Virtual public. Virtual public. And um, <laughs> I'm going to repeat Nikki's quote for two reasons. Number one, I forgot to put a new quote in. Number two, it's very applicable to what just took place on this very screen. So when we see Nikki, we'll be surprised. <laughs> wow, nice. Um, actually, I'll add another one to it. Um, I thought I was prepared, but I guess I'm not. Um, there will always be bumps in the road. <laughs> Whether it's teaching or knitting or golf. Remember to take a deep breath, which I believe I did. You probably heard the sucking sound. Um, reassess, which I did. And you will find a way to conquer and continue. So, sis, thank you for that tidbit of wisdom that has been applicable for now two weeks in a row. So, thank you. And we maybe more. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, anyway, as always, what a treat to not only be with you for today's episode, but to be with one another. Thank you so much for joining Frivolous and Frugal, and we're hoping your week will be a sweet twist of the Frivolous and Frugal. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.